I want to talk to you guys today about how I learned Japanese. Just noting that my parents are Japanese, so they were talking to me in Japanese when I was like small, right? So I had a little bit of. Uh, you know, Japanese knowledge since I was like really small. And I did go to Saturday school, which was a school, well, Saturday school, so, which was a school on Saturday that went for three hours and we'll just be learning like, you know, Japanese, kanji, hiragana, katakana. And, um, yeah, that's how I learned, um, my basic Japanese skills. But, um, you know, as, People learning Japanese know Japanese isn't all about being able to speak Japanese and being able to just read hiragana. There's like hiragana, katakana, kanji. Um, yeah, so there's like a lot you need to learn, right? When I was small, I was able to speak a little bit of Japanese and I was able to like read hiragana, but I got such low marks. At my Saturday school test, it was like 10 out of 100 or like 20 out of 100 because I wasn't really interested in Japanese itself. I was like, why do I have to go to Saturday school and why do I have to like be able to read this kanji that has like five different ways of, you know, reading it in Japanese? So I had like no motivation of learning Japanese and I got such low marks. Oh, and obviously, the students at the Saturday school, most of the students there are like more comfortable speaking in English. So obviously in class, the teachers would say speak in Japanese, but you know, children, most children would speak um, to each other in English, which didn't help learning my Japanese. What changed me was when I started to think that I wanted to become a voice actor in Japan. I told my mom that I wanted to become a voice actor in Japan when I was in primary school and um, she she looked at my tests, my test marks, and she was like, hey, you know with these test marks, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> like, you wouldn't be able to survive as a voice actor. So I was like, but I, I do want to become a voice actor. and. So from then on, I was so motivated in learning Japanese that I actually started to memorize the Japanese dictionary from like the first page. So I was like, ah, are you ill? Ah, oh, um, the first word is this. The next one is this. The third one is this. And I actually literally went to like, I think, I think, ooh, in a i u u. But, um, I started to realize that it wasn't really efficient and obviously, dictionaries they have words that you don't really use in everyday life so what i did and what i thought helped me learn japanese was to read more i um i liked reading since i was really small so i was reading a lot of english books but I was really reluctant to read Japanese books because of how much kanji there was. And unlike English, where you can, you know, even if you don't know the word, you can kind of read what that word spells out to be, right? But in Japanese, you can't even read what, you can't even guess what it would sound like because there's so many ways of being able to read one kanji. And obviously when they're like stuck stuck together, so if there's like two kanji, there's like it's like, whoa, how do you read this? So um I actually didn't read much Japanese books, but I learned that reading books really helps you with language. So I started reading Japanese books, like really simple ones, and words that I didn't know, I would search up and write it in my notebook so I can kind of like memorize it later on. Also reading manga helped me a lot. Uh, what I did was I read manga in Japanese and some manga have like furigana, which means like beside the kanji they have like hiragana on it so it's like easier to read and that helped me be able to search words that i didn't know more quickly so that kind of helped me and also manga has like illustrations so you can kind of imagine what they're trying to say or what they're trying to express so that really helped me a lot too i personally read a lot of 
shoujo manga because I like shoujo manga and I still do. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll recommend you guys some. <laughs> Another thing that I did was I watched anime and Japanese dramas with the Japanese subtitles. The reason why I saw Japanese anime and Japanese drama with the Japanese subtitles was because, you know, when you're watching anime and manga, oh, not manga, anime and dramas, and there's like words you don't really understand, if the subtitles are there, then that word with the kanji will appear in the subtitles. So that helped me, you know, search up the kanji, search up the, the words, and that helped me to like memorize a lot of vocab. Lastly, what I can recommend, like I, what I can really, really recommend is talk to Japanese people. Um, talking really helps you learn and will learn the language itself and be able to communicate using that language. I know, you know, it's really easy just to like sit at your desk and just study the words, the vocab, you know, and, you know, read text and everything. But being able to talk in that language is also really important. So what I do suggest is, you know, find some Japanese friends or make some friends, maybe even in Japan, because, you know, internet, <laughs> there's the internet these days, you can, you know, literally do anything. So, um, you know, find some Japanese friends and practice talking to them in Japanese, because that would really, really help you learn Japanese. So, uh, I hope this helps in some way. Good luck to everyone learning Japanese. I'm still you know, studying a lot of kanji and, you know, there's still some words that I don't even know how to use. I talk to my manager and, you know, sometimes I'm like, wait, um, what does that word mean? <laughs> you know, because sometimes, you know, even if you read books, you know, words in books are different to words that people use, you know, out of their mouth. So, you know, there's a lot of things you can learn just by speaking to people. So, yeah. Good luck, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.